Hacksaw Ridge was made in 2016, and I'd successfully put off seeing it until now. As soon as it was over, I leaned over to my wife and I said, I can't believe what I've just seen. It is one of the best war films I think I've ever seen. It was directed by Mel Gibson, but unlike one or two of his other films, this one is somewhat more historically accurate. This is the story of Desmond T. Doss, played superbly by Andrew Garfield, who is estimated to have saved around 75 men during the battle for Hacksaw Ridge on Okinawa during World War II. He was a conscientious objector, but joined up to do his bit as a conscientious cooperator, and despite suffering among his fellow recruits for his refusal to carry a weapon, he was eventually allowed to become a medic, and for his heroic actions on Hacksaw Ridge, he received the Medal of Honour. So this film is based on historic events, but there are some filmmaking adaptations or fictionalisations, however none of those adversely affect the respect that I have for this piece of work. For example, how Desmond Doss met his wife Dorothy, that has been changed a little. There's a fight involving Desmond's father and Desmond over a gun, when in reality that fight was between Desmond's father and Desmond's father's brother-in-law, so Desmond's uncle. And that seems to be the reason why Desmond was so against guns and taking human life for the rest of his life. However, there is a portrayal of a poster in the kitchen, I believe it is, in the house of the Ten Commandments. And there's one part of that poster we focus in on, and it's Thou Shalt Not Kill. And we see Desmond looking at that intensely. And that also seems to have had a major impact on his life and his mother's views on her take on the Bible. So all these things came together and set up this person that went into battle knowing that he was never going to carry a weapon, but what he wanted to do was not take life, it was to save life. So not only have we had the inspiring story of Desmond Doss over the years, now we have a great film to go with it, and it is a compelling story. You really feel like you're watching the real character because Andrew Garfield really does portray him so well. I think he does capture the spirit of the man. But we go with him and we can't believe that this man stuck to his principles, his beliefs, and he was prepared to go into the face of battle right in the front line, knowing that he wasn't going there to take life, he was going there to save life. And there can't have been many people who saved as many lives as Desmond did in such an almighty battle. We really do get the impression of the bullets and the shells going everywhere. And you may be thinking that you're watching a load of computer animation. Well, this was shot on set. Most of it was done live with stuntmen and pyrotechnics. And you really do feel like you must be watching cartooning here. And there's only one or two shots really where it's obviously computer animation. But those have to be forgiven because they really are setting the scene for the battle that is to come. And you really do get the impression of what an almighty massive struggle this was. And if only everyone had known how deep underground the Japanese were, then maybe something else could have been done other than just sending these men right into the front line into a hail of bullets. So it really does capture the spirit of what it was like. And in here with my THX system and the subwoofer going, it really did put us into the heart of the battle. But I'm told that with Dolby Atmos, you can hear the bullets whistling above you. So as much as I think a big subwoofer is the most vital ingredient for getting the best out of this film, it would be nice to have those overhead channels perhaps as well. So if you've got an Atmos system and a really big subwoofer, if you haven't seen Hacksaw Ridge, you're in for a treat. I think this is a great 4K disc and just the briefest of looks at the Blu-ray will tell you immediately how superior the 4K really is. The volume on both discs may be a little lower than most releases, but that's easily fixed, just turn it up a bit. The colour and contrast on the 4K is so superior to the Blu-ray as to give it an almost filmic look. Not entirely though, as it was shot on video at 2.8K and 6K, but with only a 2K video master, this is a 4K upscale. When it looks as good as this though, it really doesn't matter. It's a wonderful story, expertly told by great filmmakers, with an excellent troupe of actors, many of whom are Australian, because this was shot in Australia, and some great stunt work. The work of the stuntmen in this is quite often absolutely incredible. 
It had an estimated budget of $40 million and took at the worldwide box office $180 million, which suggests that this film found a good audience. I nearly purchased this one on 4K many times, but somehow I never got around to it. I kept thinking that someone would have told me it was really good if it really was that good. And then I got around to finally watching the trailer. And I thought that film looks interesting. And I just happened to be in the Newbury HMV when they took a delivery in of the releases coming out the following week. And this steelbook was one of those in there. I couldn't buy it on the day because it wasn't out for a few days. So I had to wait a while. And on my next visit, I made a beeline for it on the shelves and there was still one of the copies that they'd received on that day. So I came away with it. I've now finally watched it and I really am astounded by how good it is. So if you haven't seen it, it's about time you did. Yes, it's not a true 4K, it's a 2K upscale, but there was a lot of this that was shot in 6K, as I said, and that is just like the VistaVision effect, even on video, it will shrink down and give a better image in the end product. So worth a purchase is quite often going cheap on the standard release, but this is a very nice steel book. And if you can find this one, I do recommend it. I think it's lovely. There are plenty of extras on here. There's a variety of them. I think there's one or two that are different on the Blu-ray, but there's a very long making of on both discs. And that is very interesting watching if you can get through it. I think it runs about an hour, an hour and a half, but makes the whole thing a bit more enjoyable. Now, Andrew Garfield, you may know him best for playing a certain web slinger. He did two of the Spider-Man films and made an appearance in the most recent Spider-Man with the other two Spider-Men. But the film I think I liked him best in was a little known film by the name of Breathe. This is another compelling story, but some may find it a little too upsetting. So you better check that one out if you think about picking up a copy of Breathe. But my recollection of this is that Andrew Garfield was terrific in it. Some of you may have noticed I've got Return of the Jedi special edition poster in the light box there. And I think I'll give you a closer look at that because I didn't really show it off too well in the last video. Time was getting on, the video was getting a bit over long. So I said I'd put that in the light box and show it to you. And also the special edition poster for The Empire Strikes Back. Now both of these are double sided, whereas the special edition for Star Wars was single sided. And hopefully you can see the difference there on the impact of a double sided poster in a light box compared to a single sided. I think they're all terrific, but Return of the Jedi is the best of them. Another film that people have been asking me to review Brian De Palma's Carlito's Way. I haven't seen this since opening night, I think it was, at the Empire Leicester Square. And I remember it was a really good film. A bit nasty in places, perhaps might have had some bad language in it. But anyway, I came away really enjoying it that night at the Empire. So about time I had another look at it, and what better than on a new 4K disc. Been around for a while now, but I'm really looking forward to that. And before I go, one last thing to mention, Dmitry Popov might be interested in this, Solaris. I know there was a remake with George Clooney and Natasha McElhone, which I thought was a beautiful film, but as a result of that, I've long wanted to see this. And in Newbury HMV recently, I saw it on the shelf just as I was giving up looking for anything else. Ah, oh, I'll have that. Went through the till and it was only 14 99 so even cheaper than it said on the ticket. So it sometimes proves that it's worth checking what the actual price is because they don't have the time to change every single ticket in these stores. But it comes with a little booklet that was put out by Criterion and I'm rather looking forward to seeing that one. So perhaps I'll update you on that in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on producing content like this in the future. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.